In this episode of the Data Career Podcast, I'm going to walk you through how you can learn SQL for free with this five-step course. It's gonna be awesome. SQL's very powerful, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. SQL is awesome, you guys. It is like a superpower and it is the most in-demand data analyst skill that you could possibly learn. If you didn't know, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And like I said, it's awesome, but it is a little bit scary because it does have that L word inside of it, which is the language, which means it is definitely kind of a programming language, which is a step up from Excel, a step up from Tableau, a step up from Power BI but it's something well worth learning if you want to be a data analyst or have any sort of data career. It is really the probably the most used thing that us data career people use, but it is hard, especially when you're getting started. But have no fear, today I'm going to be giving you a five-step crash course on SQL that will help you do your own SQL projects and learn SQL along the way. So the first step you wanna do is go to kaggle.com. That is K-A-G-G-L-E.com. This is an awesome data science website. One of the really cool features is they have literally tens of thousands of different data sets. And so you can go to the data set part of their website and actually just search all the data sets that they have. It's like a data set search engine. It is one of my go-to places for getting data sets and search for whatever data set you're interested in. You know, if you're interested in sports, search for sports. If you're interested in stocks, there's great stock data there. Animals, whatever you're interested in, it doesn't matter. Trees, mountains, there is almost a data set for everything that you could possibly need on Kaggle. So go find some interesting data that looks interesting. Now, it doesn't have to be any sort of SQL form. Right here, we're just trying to find the data. In fact, for this tutorial, what I'm teaching you, it's actually better if it's just a CSV. It'll just be a little bit simpler. So a CSV is a comma-separated value file. It's very similar to a text file or an Excel file, and that's the majority of the time, that's what is actually on Kaggle.com, is CSV files. So find a data set that you're interested in and download it. Now, once you have it downloaded, we're going to put it in SQL. And usually that's a little bit of a difficult task because one of the hardest parts of actually using SQL is getting it downloaded and getting it to actually work on your machine. Those two steps actually make SQL really difficult sometimes. So when you're just starting out or when you're not that experienced, we're gonna skip those steps. We're gonna make it a little bit easier for you. And so what I want you to do is go to bit.io. This is a website I found that allows you to upload CSVs and transform them into SQL databases and then query those databases online all for free without even a login, I'm pretty sure, which is absolutely uh, amazing. So if you go to bit.io, you should be able to upload your CSV there and that will make it into a SQL database and give you a SQL engine that you can then type commands to that can query that, or give you the results all that good stuff. It's just like any sort of SQL, like MySQL or MySQL Workbench or SQLite or anything like that. It's just, instead of being on your computer, it's in the cloud and it's really easy to access. So we don't want you to have to go through that headache of having to figure out how to install SQL and it not working and getting the CSV to the SQL data. So if you use bit.io, that will take away the stress and just make it a lot easier. Okay. After you've done that, you still need to learn SQL, of course, but the good news is there's lots of free ways to learn SQL online. One of my favorites is W3. If you just Google W3 SQL, that will be one of the first links and just click on it. It's green and it basically will have anything you need to learn about SQL and you can just learn it all through there. It even has like a try it yourself button, which allows you to try out some of the queries and see how they work on your own. Go through a couple of the lessons. Their SQL is very deep, but also you can learn quite a bit pretty easily at the beginning. And you can follow my favorite 13 SQL queries that will help you pretty much learn everything that you need to learn. Those keywords or those clauses or those commands are select, from, where, group by, order by, like, count, max or min or both, <laughs> average, case when, join, distinct, and having. Those are the 13 that I would focus on. All of those lessons should be there pretty easily to find in W3. I would go through all 13 of those and get a feel for you know what's going on. 
This is probably gonna take two to four hours, so make sure you get, you know, block out the time, get a feel for it. But once you're feeling okay with it, we're gonna go back to bits.io with our new data set, and we're going to ask some interesting questions for our data. Whatever the data set you picked, whether it's animals or police data or sports data, whatever, ask questions like, how many of this or how many of that? or what was the total, or what was the average. Groups and categories is another one. Look for a column in your data set that groups the rows together. Did this group have, on average, more something than this one? How did this category affect this other variable? Those are good questions that you can ask. How do these things compare? You know, Look at these subsets of rows. What trends do we see over time? What was the most? What was the least? Those are the type of questions you'll want to be asking your data. And you ask those questions, write them down, and then try to use SQL to solve those questions. So once again, you're going to be using the select, the from, the where, the group by, the order by, count, all that good stuff, all those SQL commands I just taught you, just barely, that you learned on W3. Use those to answer the questions that you come up with. And there you go, you're building your first SQL project without even realizing it, which is awesome. You found the data on your own, you learned SQL on the side, you mix the two together, and that's how you can create your own project, do your own SQL course right there, okay? Then the last step is the most important, but most people ignore it, so don't ignore it, and that is to do a write-up of your findings. Talk about this experience, where did you learn about the data set? What data set did you choose? Why did you choose it? Where did you learn SQL? What questions did you ask that you wanted to answer in the data set? How did you answer those questions? What were the SQL queries? Take screenshots of your SQL queries. But whatever you do, you just need to make sure you basically write a blog or like an article that explains this whole process and documents your learning because it's all about documenting, not creating when it comes to content creation. And also keep in mind that if you just put SQL on your resume, that's not nearly as powerful as having this project be on your portfolio, which you can do, like I said, in probably one day. We're talking... I don't know, six hours, you could probably knock this whole thing out um, from scratch too. Like if you've already used SQL, if you've already used Kaggle, you're probably gonna do this a lot faster. Now in terms of write-up, one of my favorite is using LinkedIn articles. It's just really easy and it's baked into LinkedIn. So you don't have to like go anywhere else or create anything else. You'll give an intro to the data, write the answer to your questions, conclude, and then post it online. Make sure you share it, tag someone, put it on your resume, whatever, just like show people. And that is all you need. That is a free SQL course right there in just five simple steps. Don't overcomplicate this. I know you guys can do this and I believe in you. And if you do it, end up tagging me on LinkedIn, Avery Smith, or wherever you listen to this podcast. You can write a comment in the podcast or a review, or you can also find me on Instagram at Data Career Jumpstart. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you did, I'm gonna have an awesome free masterclass that I know you're going to love. We're gonna talk about a lot of things this episode talked about. You can get it absolutely for free at datacareerjumpstart.com slash training or using the link in the show notes down below. Hope to see you there.